When Gravity was released in 2013, it wasn't just a box office success. It was also met with critical and academic acclaim. Gravity's style and story were described in terms typically reserved for high art. Film reviewers labeled the space disaster movie genuinely experimental and the world's biggest avant-garde movie. Film scholars were also taken with director Alfonso Cuaron. They praised the way he turned the film into a laboratory of the senses, and they called Gravity an experimental blockbuster. Did Gravity really go where no movie had gone before? A couple years have passed since its release, so let's ask ourselves. What is the weight of Gravity? Gravity is not heavy on plot, but its bare-bones narrative was singled out for praise, with critics and academics noting how the minimal plot makes way for a movie that focuses on pure bodily sensation. Indeed, the slight storyline recalls the early cinema of attractions, movies that relied more on curiosity and shock value than on narrative. Gravity's skeletal story takes us back to the origins of cinema in another way as well. In its compact 91-minute runtime, 84 if you exclude the end credits. Quaron basically stages the same spectacular set piece three times. Space debris destroys a space shuttle, then a space station, then another space station. This evokes early cinematic experience. When traveling bioscope shows were often hosted on fairgrounds, Gravity is a modern day version of that entertainment, a digital amusement park ride, a carousel where you get three goes for one ticket. It is cinema of a singular attraction. Remarkable, certainly, but hardly revolutionary. Gotta admit one thing. Can't beat the view. When Gravity was dubbed avant-garde and experimental, these adjectives most often referred to the movie's breathtaking 3D visuals. The characters are marooned in space, and Quaron's whirling long takes express their disorientation. The camera's 3D gymnastics sabotage any sense of up or down, left or right. Direction is an abstraction in the gyrating visuals of gravity, as it is in space. Which is why Cuaron's 2013 blockbuster was compared to 1971's La Région Centrale. Michael Snow's spectacular experimental film features a similarly vertiginous camera whirling through the air. But this kind of negation of the horizon is hardly an invention of the movies, even experimental ones. Take action painting. I usually paint on the floor. This way I can walk around it, work from all four sides, and be in the painting. There is no beginning and no end. Jackson Pollock's paintings presage Snow and Quaron's movies. These canvases and screens can be approached from all sides. They have freed themselves from the horizon and the horizontal. You know, the cool thing of this film is the film that you can watch in any position. You can watch it laying down, upside down, and it doesn't matter, it just keeps on going. Quaron throws 3D technology into the mix, adding another dimension to the disorientation. But he wasn't the first to use this dizzying potential of 3D. When Werner Herzog made his documentary on the Chauvet cave paintings, the German auteur had a similar bit of fun with this new toy, the 3D camera. Ironically, the effect of Quaron's high-tech 3D imagery recalls the humble camera obscura, that black box that mirrors reality and turns it upside down. Again, this is gravity bringing cinema back to its roots, its photographic roots in this case. Fascinating, absolutely, but hardly innovative. The movie's marketing stressed another groundbreaking aspect, its technical mastery and superior effects work. Previous space epics were often let down by shoddy special effects. The way light is reflected on costumes and helmets in particular is a giveaway. Gravity found a solution, the light box. We developed a technique where we would move the camera on a robot and we would move the lights around by surrounding the actor with a giant TV screen made into a box. We could move the lights to wherever we wanted them to be and change the color and the texture and, and all sorts of aspects of the light. The repercussions of its lightbox technology is where the movie's true revolution lies. Gravity blurred the lines between pre-production, production, and post-production. The 3D visual effects, a staple of post-production, were as good as finished before the shoot with the actors even began. 
the effects had to be ready for the makers to be able to use the LED box lighting technique that lights the actors with reflections of the computer-generated environment. Everything was written in stone. Everything from the camera movements, but also the timings. And action. One, two, go. This in turn meant the actors had to time their performances to the already finished special effects. Stand by, foot. Explosion. Duck. In traditional filmmaking, Fight. man is the measure of all things. The physical performance of actresses and actors is the meter of the movie's timeline. Even cutting-edge effects based on motion capture techniques still use a human performance as their guideline. In Gravity, that performance is dictated by computer-generated graphics. Gravity is the first film where the actors are directed by a computer. Gravity may prove to be film's deep blue moment call it a blow against humanity. After six games over nine days, Deep Blue, the IBM computer, beat Garry Kasparov, considered to be the best chess player in the history of the game. And whoa! Is this the pivotal juncture when the balance between man and technology shifts in favor of the latter? In any case, gravity upends the century-old relation between performance and post-production, between physical expression and technology. The body has always been the metronome of the movies. Literally so. When movie cameras were still hand-cranked, whatever Buster Keaton and Ziga Vertov may have tried to make us believe. Metaphorically, when it was the performance of the actor that commanded the camera's gaze. Not anymore. If gravity is the sign of films to come.